once again a very good evening to all of you thank you for all joining in am i audible to everyone yes ma'am so we meet again for the second day and i'm really glad that all of you could take out time and come here so a very warm welcome uh so just a quick recapitulation of what we did uh, last week we did the emotion wheel of colors uh, i hope you have understood the technique and gone through the youtube video if you couldn't understand in the first go uh, so any questions and any queries you can directly message me um there were a few queries which i have addressed so in spite of that if you have any further queries you can always uh, address so today we'll be moving on to something called totem animals but before that i would just like you to quickly you know engage in one activity which i'm going to talk about just give me a minute so all of you need to respond in the chat box <clears throat> so are you all ready if i can have a few cameras on it will be great because otherwise it seems as if i'm just talking into uh, my laptop screen <laughs> thank you so what you need to do is this has to be very quick okay and this is one of my favorite 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 uh, ice breakers you can say you can try it out anywhere you want to and this gives you very interesting results okay so this is a part of what we call our subconscious and conscious mind okay so don't put too much of stress when you're responding and it has to be very quick okay that's something to do with animals since we are starting off with the totem animals okay so here goes the question okay think of three animals three animals and note it down quickly whatever comes to your mind one two three you should be done okay there's no thinking in word jumps right you have noted it down now for each animal what you do is assign certain adjectives generally we do this on an elaborate basis when you draw it out and then you write down adjectives around it but since it's an ice breaker we'll just do it verbally so what you need to do is write down a few adjectives for each of those animals so i give you approximately 2 minutes to work on it yes someone has their hands raised yes priyanka ma'am tell me you have a question repeat the instruction okay you need to think of three animals and you need to quickly write it down okay think of three animals and quickly write it down and for each animal what you need to do is put down adjectives it would be better uh, if you can put more than three adjectives right done all of you okay it can be anything birds animals insects fish it can be anything but adjectives are more important what you write against each okay <clears throat> i hope almost all of you are done right now i'm going to give you what is what okay so just try to figure it out the first animal which you wrote generally denotes how you perceive people perceive you what you feel other people look at you as okay the first animal which i'm talking about the second animal generally denotes who you want to be like or what you want to be like and the third animal denotes who you are actually inside like your real self you must have heard about real self and ideal self and all so this is what the activity does to you it opens up a lot of thoughts i don't know whether it matched your findings or not but most of the time it does and it's pretty amazing how fast we can know someone 
So this is one icebreaker which I wanted to share. Any uh, reflection on it? Anything you would like to say? I'm repeating. The first animal talks about how you see other people see you as. That's your perception that these the people around me perceive me in a particular way. The second animal denotes who you want to be. What is what is your aspiration about yourself? You know how I would like to be. I'm striving. I'm struggling to become like that. And the third animal generally denotes who you are actually inside. That's your real self. Okay. So any reflections, anything you would like to say here before we proceed? Ma'am, what is the meaning of uh, rabbit? I just chose the first uh, animal is a rabbit. How people see me, what that means? There's no meaning over here. Whatever adjectives you have assigned will be meaningful to you. Okay. Can someone share their results? Then I can just talk briefly on that and then we can proceed with the main activity. Anyone who would like to share? So, uh, I would like to share. Yes. The first animal that I wrote was a lion. And uh, I think like, you know, I have some, like what I thought of writing while I wrote lion was leadership, you know, okay. uh, uh, being in the limelight. So yes, yes. that is something. And uh, number two would be like who I would want to be. Uh, as you said, it would be a parrot. I don't know why I wrote it down. I maybe, you know, I want to be free spirited like a bird. What are your something. objectives associated with that? What so I you... wrote uh, free spirited and, you know, uh, freedom, independence. Uh -huh. So that is what I wrote. Okay. Uh, random words. And third would be uh, a deer. Because, uh, you know, like, honestly, I thought of that deer story where uh, the antennas get, uh, you know, uh, entangled with the all those hurdles and th these things. So that is how I related uh, to that story. And I wrote the third animal as a uh, deer. So, yeah. Okay. So does it in, uh, is it in sync with what you're going through right now or whom you want to be or what are your aspirations? Yeah, it is actually how uh, I, you know, exactly how I would say after you said the, uh, the interpretation, exactly so. And uh, this is amazing, like how quickly we can get to know all this thing. Yes, and it's pretty much dangerous. So don't try it the first time you meet someone. <laughs> okay, jokes apart, something which you can do very quickly. And it's pretty interesting as an icebreaker, someone getting to know about uh, you as a person as well. It can be pretty interesting way of connecting because if you have got very... Um, you know, closed clients or someone who doesn't want to talk much, you can always try this out as a quick icebreaker. Okay, so I hope this was pretty much um, insightful. <clears throat> you can try it out with your family and friends and they'll be pretty much, you know, amazed by how much you can know about the present situation. So uh, this is part of a method or I would rather say it's one of the methods used as uh, in for totem animals. Now, what are totem animals? Totem animals has a history way back, you know, way back in time, uh, specifically the Americans. You can read about, I've given a URL also, you can read about their stories and everything. All the details are given about the origin of totems. Basically, totem animals are also called spirit animals or uh, angel animals because why in a particular section of american culture they believe that animals were our spirit guides like whichever animal is recurring in your life i'll come to that part a little later so whichever animal is recurring in your life becomes your spirit guide or gives you certain messages wherein you can uh, focus on changing your personality or Whatever your current situation is, it will help you to reflect and change certain dynamics around you. Okay. And for each of these clans which they had, each of these groups which they had, they had got these totem poles, which they call totem poles. This is how it looked like, you know, stacked on one on top of each other. There were huge poles carved out of wood. <clears throat> and they represented each of these animals. For each generation, they had one animal which represented the clan or the tribe or the family. 
Now these animals were supposed to give them a lot of strength. For each of these animals, they had different meanings, different evaluations, and then it is supposed to be their prime most guardian angel who saved them, who gave them direction in life whenever it was needed. So from this, an art therapy basis came into existence where you use animal symbols as a part of your strength building or your personality building or understanding your current conflicts. Now, this is one part where, which is scientific by nature. The other part is very much related to a spiritual realm or the shamans, which we say. They generally use spirit guides or spirit animals as, a, as giving you direction in life. Now, how you can infuse these two, we are going to discuss this today. Okay. So, I would like you to first understand... Now, before we proceed into the other details, I would just like you to take a minute time and write down or just jot down a few instances where you felt drawn towards an animal or there were recurrent dreams about a particular animal. Or you are kind, kind of very strangely attracted towards a particular animal. Has that ever happened with you at any point of time? You're very much drawn towards an animal or you're seeing an animal pretty much every time in your dream for a longer period of time. Or certain animals are drawn towards you without any reason. Persian cats. <laughs> because they're abundant in the environment, of course. They're, they're, I love cats because they're like quite naughty. I'm, I'm a naughty person and I really like naughty animals and children. So I'm just always drawn towards the Persian cats and the cats are like naughty, uh, jumping here and there, everything. Okay, okay, great. For me, it's um, dogs. Okay, dogs and cats are pretty much very common because they are present in our environment in abundance yes. but apart from that also try to understand or try to figure out were there any even once if you have dreamt about an animal chasing you or coming into your dream snake, snake chasing yeah it can be snake it can be tiger these are very common animals which come into our consciousness that you first need to note down that's more of the spiritual realm which we'll be talking about but apart from that also what i would like you to do is just close your eyes and whatever whichever animal comes to your mind you know if you close your eyes you try to bring into your consciousness an animal okay and note that down too you're easily drawn towards that animal it came to you very naturally you didn't have to force into your consciousness just try to figure out which animal it is. <clears throat> and if required in an art therapy setting, what we do is take out time for this and let people draw that out in whichever way possible. It may not be an artistic drawing. It can be just a scribble. It can be uh, a cartoon. It can be even you can use magazines, you know, National Geographic magazines or certain um, nature uh, magazines where you get animals easily and cut it out and paste it as a collage. So two variations you can do. One, you can ask them to draw, draw it out or you can just cut paste from somewhere. Basically, the engagement with the entire process is to fixate you to the entire work which we'll be doing. So if someone has got an owl, someone has got a fox, uh, people also get jellyfish, something of that kind also. You know, birds, jellyfish, bear. So whatever you get, and if you can just quickly write it down in the chat box, it's interesting to you. No, cow, okay, zebra, crow, butterfly, kangaroo, okay, panda, <clears throat> wolf, rabbit, lion, kangaroo again in emoji style, okay, monkey, crow, eagle, Wow, wonderful. So there's an assortment of animals which comes to our oh, sloth. Fine. Okay, great. So we see a lot of people are coming up with a lot of different types of animals and birds. Robin, I just got a response. Horse. Great. Now you must be wondering, okay, reindeer is something very unusual. But yes, it's, we can put it into the deer category itself. Okay, 
Now I would ask you to draw it out, whichever way you want to. Just simply draw it out. Now, for me, I would like to pause here because uh, while you're drawing, I'm going to show you a few things. This again, I'll send it to you. So no point of writing it down. Uh, according to the totem history, there are five different poles which they used. One was for honor poles, where they celebrated a person or an event or some landmark. That was the most prestigious pole, you can say, which uh, exhibited happiness and pride and that. Uh, the second one was the shame pole. The shame pole showed uh, something going wrong, you know, some some of the incidents which went wrong or a particular characteristics of a person was not appreciated in that clan. So they also built certain shame poles in order to make other people understand that you shouldn't be doing all these things. So there was this shame pole and then there were heraldic poles where uh, they represented smaller groups of people like in families inside the clan. So each of these families had special poles made for themselves representing what the strengths were or what the ethics and values of the family was. Then you have uh, the story pole which describes the family's history, how they have struggled or what there were, uh, if there were any struggles, how they overcame it. It was represented by these animals which kind of denoted certain important characteristics of each of the family members. And then there were memorial poles honoring the dead. So these were the five different poles. We generally do this as an advanced version of totem poles, but for the time being, don't get into this because otherwise it's going to get confused. We'll do it at a later time, maybe. So you can see I have given a lot of tiger pictures everywhere. Before I get into the technical part, here is a tiger, and then there's a white tiger, and this tiger. Throughout my childhood, I have got dreams of tigers and lions chasing me all the time. I was pretty much dreadful for me. You know, when I used to wake up, it uh, got me into an anxiety position situation. So that point of time, I couldn't understand why I used to get dreams so frequently of tigers and lions and this and that. Specifically, ferocious animal chasing me. But uh, as I grew, uh, as I got into maturity, that point of time I realized, and while I was doing all the art therapy techniques and all, it came into my consciousness that courage is something which I had lacked in all throughout my childhood. I had anxiety issues, I had speaking issues, I was fearful about every small thing. When I realized that, that came into my knowledge that yes, it was some kind of a message sent across that, yes, I need to work on certain um, acts of courage. And building on courage really helped me to an extent, you can say. So this might be seeming to be very, you know, superficial and, OK, related to some kind of uh, spiritual realm and all. But it's not. Your unconscious mind kind of develops some symbolism and throws it to you certain times in order to make you understand what you need to build upon. So what you did just right now might represent certain needs and wants and um, kind of modifications which you need to do in life in order to progress. May not be a very challenging situation for you, but certain characteristics of these animals which you have just drawn out might indicate certain changes which are required in your current life. So we are going to explore that. <laughs> So I'll read this out. Drawing animals can serve as a source of inspiration and comfort for many. Most importantly, the creatures you choose to depict can reveal insights and convey essential messages about yourself, your specifically your personality and what you're going through right now. Each animal has its own set of strengths and qualities that you can relate to. So there's a short case history given here. For instance, a client once chose to draw a turtle, initially viewing it as a symbol of moving slowly through life. However, upon further discussion, she realized that taking steps at a slower pace isn't necessarily negative. 
Instead, it can help you appreciate life's small moments. So that was an insight given into the entire process. So now I would like you to focus on what you have drawn. Now this worksheet can be done at a later stage where uh, once you figure out what totem animals are, there's a whole PDF on which animals uh, represents what. And you can build upon your totem animals, give a date and build upon your totem animals. See, it will keep on changing with time. So now if you've drawn maybe a deer, later on, maybe one month later, if you reflect, if you do the same activity, you will see that it's something very different. Okay, so that will give you another set of insight as to what I need to modify or change around or inside me. So you keep on building your totem poles as you progress in life. It, can, it may not be only four, it can be a whole sheet of paper, or it can be a long length of, you know, these tires which you can have as a template and you can start putting in your totem what you can uh, have in return over a period of time is a series of animals and a series of characteristics which you built upon and the lines given beside each totem uh, tire what you can do is journal in a few words about why you actually represented that animal okay. so if you uh, would like to, I haven't given this yet, but I'm just showing you the entire file. Before getting into the analysis part, this is done for a holistic viewpoint, but this is not the only thing which you'll refer to. What you need to do is first reflect on the animal, how you feel about an animal. What is the animal, you know, trying to tell you? Can someone try it out before we get into the meanings, the actual meanings of? Because this is done on a basis of psychoanalysis, or maybe you can say <clears throat> the uh, working of the subconscious mind, which is trying to send you a signal. But how do you feel about your animal is more important. Can anyone share? I have a question rather than sharing. Yes. Uh, so uh, basically, I don't get more of dreams, but um, I would say that I have just got twice or three instances of when dog was chasing me, and okay. that was very really scary, scary. That I just woke up from my uh, like my sleep. I just woke up and I was very much restless. I was very much in this uh, feeling of nervousness, and I don't know what happened, but. That happened like only twice or thrice. And okay. then no other animal, no dreams, anything doesn't came that much. So I'm not sure what it means. See, it's only if you get one dream and it's very intense, may not be a multiple times. If it's very intense and you felt as if you're exhausted and anxious, that can be a symbolism as well. <clears throat> okay, we are not getting into the shamanism part. That's a very deep field which I am also not very aware of. But only if you go by the subconscious, unconscious part, you can, uh, you will be able to reflect. Like, how do you feel about dogs? Maybe if you share it, you'll be able to understand the connection. That's the time when you needed those traits inside you. Maybe thereby you were chased. Hmm. As, uh, first time when I got, I was very young. So it might be that time I just want to know, be more friendly, be more open to others. That was the connection I could see. Because after that, it happened more. And then, of course, when, wherever I went, it was easy for me to build friends. It was easy to be open up with them. That was one connection I can think of. Yes. OK. Anyone else who would like to share? Any connection you get with the animal you have stated or drawn? Uh, so I would like to share. Uh, the thing is that snakes are something that I dreamt of since my childhood. So I used to get all these snakes dreams and there used to be not one snake, but a, like there used to be a lot of snakes all around. So and I uh, have uh, understood with, you know, me growing up that I have not, I have not feared it. I, I was not scared of it. It was more like I am just perceiving it because it's happening around me, and more, more or less, it was inside my house. So most of the time, I used to see them uh, inside my house, uh, you know, roaming around. And I have never uh, been scared of it. But then, 
uh, I don't know why, but I feel this dream is kind of lucky uh, when I, whenever I have it. Uh, so yeah. That's okay. Something. So how do you feel about snakes? Is safe or what are the characteristics you would like to? So uh, I wouldn't call it safe, or I wouldn't say that I'm scared of. But uh, I don't know. I like I I have never given it so much thought, honestly. But I feel it that you know whenever I have uh, snake uh, dreams, mm -hmm. it's some um, it brings me luck, or you know it's something lucky. Uh, so that is how I perceive it. Yeah. Okay, we'll try to explore what the meaning is, and then figure it out. Maybe certain incidents at that point of time in your life, which is synchronized with you seeing a snake, right? And those yes. who have not dreamt yes. of any animal in particular, whatever came to your consciousness right now will be symbolizing your current state of mind or current state of you know your personality characteristics. So, anyone else before we proceed? Uh, yes, I, I was uh, when I uh, just closed my eyes. Uh, thought about lion. I never had uh, so much of dreams about animals, but uh, the my unconscious mind said about lion. So uh, it kind uh, it kind of uh, matches with my personality. I'm like kind of a strong person physically as well, physically and mentally, and I feel like uh, to be a lion and uh, okay. like. Can rule the jungle, kind of person. Right, right. Not in a bossy way, but yeah, maybe in a different way. Okay, that's great. Great. So reflecting on that, maybe you can build upon your personality that way. Yes, ma'am. Further, yes, anyone. Any in the, in the uh, uh, upper portion you have given that uh, how you want to be that even also as a uh, animal that was lion. Ah, exactly. Yes, anyone else. Yes. Am I audible? Yes, yes, absolutely. Right. So I think I also chose a lion. Um, and I think in terms of what I wrote, the three adjectives initially also were uh, fierce, unique, and beautiful. Um, okay. And I think like you mentioned that I want other people to perceive me. But I think the first thing that came to my mind is that I feel like I'm always ready to fight uh, at this <laughs> point in time in my life, you know, where I feel like I'm on the edge or I'm irritable, uh, you know, with the people around me. So, and people have told me that I get on my, like my claws come out a lot of times when, you know, they make a comment or whatever. So I think um, that's something to reflect on. Right. So yes, something to reflect on and why you do it will also be another big area to reflect on. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Any other reflections? Anyone would like to share? So it would be great if you come up because then people will also get an insight into how totems work. Um, so, ma'am, this is Archana here. I, uh, when I closed my eyes, I saw wolf. Uh, and uh, when I had written the, when you asked the first question, how people perceive you, so I had written wolf again. <laughs> And the adjectives I used were leader, magic, and the pack, that is a group. Right. Now, uh, when I, uh, again, when I'm uh, reflecting upon it, the word that keeps coming is intense. Okay. So, uh, again, uh, I'm a little uh, confused here exactly what intense means. Uh, would like to reflect upon it, but if in case you can just guide a little. Yeah, intense would be any heightened emotion, which you can say, or something which is happening uh, very frequently around you. And okay. uh, since you said magic, uh, what else did you say? A uh, leader and a pack, the group. The group. Maybe something to do with either family or your workspace where you are held responsible. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, there you're feeling somewhat overwhelmed about certain things where decision making becomes problem and you're waiting for the correct moment to come up and show okay you know, yeah I'm getting it working on that basically right thanks thank you so much so maybe you can reflect as to how you can take control and take charge of things sure then thank you yeah. yes. uh, hi uh, so uh, when i closed my eyes so i saw a butterfly so my reflection of it is that um, Probably, um, you know, I need to be more carefree and, you know, free, uh, freer from thoughts. And, um, you know, it's more, it symbolizes more with freedom. 
um, you know, spreading the wings and you know, just right. being away from certain thoughts. Also, um, you know, it, it brings a sense of uh, freedom to me. So that's my uh, reflection of uh, great. Part. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. So everyone is getting a hang of how to decipher their own animals and symbolisms. Basically, I'll tell you the trick. Go by the metaphorical meaning. We generally uh, focus on a lot of external characteristics, but go by what they do or how it makes you feel like. Okay, then you'll get all your answers with clarity. Yes, anyone else who would like to say? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. So, um, for me, I I am a very animal lover. So, any animal, any bird around my place, I love and. Uh, as I get, I get very connected very easily with them. Mm -hmm. So mainly dogs, okay. uh, like loving, caring, and very warm. Mm -hmm. These are the things which I think uh, we get right. from them. And, and secondly, uh, monkeys. Okay. I don't know. I connect very well with monkeys. So how do you uh, about ma monkeys? Maybe you can reflect on that. Uh, yes, because the place where I live, we had a lot of monkeys. Very often they visit our place also. Okay. And people used to hate them. Uh, I remember forest department come and they used to just chase them to the... But I usually feel they are very... Um, they live together, they work for each other. Even they come to our place and they destroy my whole kitchen. But still the smallest one... He's, he's ready to pick yeah. up something to take it out for, for his or her friends. Right. Uh, so it's a very beautiful message we get from them. Uh, so like uh, very caring and uh, living together. Right. Maybe right. your entire life also surrounds around those particular you know values and ethics which you're looking at. Yes. Maybe if you reflect on that. Uh, and what uh, maybe, maybe um, I don't know. Maybe it reflects my characteristics. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm connecting to them. I'm liking them yes. more. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Can be the thing. Okay. So um, going quickly through this document is a lot over here. I can see around 74 pages. We have tried to put in as many animals as possible here with symbolism. Generally, this is a PDF done based on uh, what the typical guidelines are of each totem. But it cannot be that it's the only thing which you refer to. It can be the ones which we just reflected. We did an exercise. So a person who is coming up with a very new animal, which you don't have it in the glossary, you can always ask them to brainstorm as to how they feel about it. Okay. So it's not possible to list down all of them. The major ones which we have listed down, say for instance, anyone who has got alligator, you can kind of refer to this. These characteristics which generally tell you that either the person is lacking or the person is abundant on it and how the person came with those certain features. So what you can do is print out these sheets I'll talk about the uh, totem animal deck, but uh, even if you don't want to make it, what you can do is print out these sheets. There are certain, you know, uh, spaces where you can see this template. You can ask maybe very young children or even teenagers. They take a lot of interest in this. Even adults, they love coloring. You know, each of these spaces, you can ask them to color. If you don't want to do that entire elaborate process of uh, totem animals, because it takes a lot of time. So what you do is print out a particular sheet after you do the first phase where you're asked to either talk about their dreams or certain animals which they're drawn to or generally whatever comes to their mind. After which you can give them that particular sheet to reflect upon. Now this entire list which you have on the left hand side, <clears throat> you can ask them to tick off. Maybe on a point of one to five, you, you can ask them, you know, uh, for fierceness, how do you scale yourself on a point of one to five on a scale of one to five so you can exactly understand what is the blend of characteristics which they have and if you see a problem area anywhere say for example a person says that i'm a five on fears five on anger 
so you can question them you can ask them to brainstorm as to what got you to that stage because chronic anger can be detrimental or very stressful for a person anger is generally a secondary emotion it's so it's sourced out of something which is hurtful okay so this is just an example there can be a lot of positive ones also with a five points so you can always appreciate them boost their self confidence so this is one of them we have a crab here i'm not sure if anyone has got a crab but just going by it quickly dolphin you'll get this pdf so don't try to note everything down i'll send you the pdf there's a beaver someone has told beaver no over here so teamwork dreams vigilance clarity a builder something to re relates with your work environment beavers are generally related to the work because they are very dexterous animals they work a lot they build certain uh, things very fast fish if you have <clears throat> these are the symbolisms of fish frog someone wrote frog here lobster i'll go quickly octopus let me know if you want to me to stop somewhere otter salamander is more like the water lizard sea horse so we've got all the weird animals covered here as well so you don't need to worry people do come up with a lot of uh, different types of animals so turtle is something which anyone has written turtle is a very common animal which comes up specifically when you need safety and you need to slow yourself down so many a times we are overworked you know we feel overstressed and we don't know what to do we become frivolous if turtle is coming up it's a subconscious message to you that you need to slow down take it easy concentrate on yourself and just cuddle up somewhere so that you have some safety with you first and you have clarity of thought okay air animals i'll go through this quickly also because um crow i saw a crow written so it's like uh, crows are in fact said to be a connection between the supernatural and the real world but we are not getting into that but maybe there's a symbolism that you are getting into some spiritual field or you're trying to have certain faith inside you faith building you know and it's also about a lot of cleanliness and clarity which you need around you see all these words trickster manipulative mischievous this doesn't denote that it's a negative connotation about yourself okay because um, trickster can be some character personality characteristics where you may be tricking yourself into believing something which you don't like as well okay so it's a form of self reflection it's not necessary a characteristic which shows you are a negative person it can be a self belief where you're tricking your mind into believing something which is not there okay maybe you're trying to avoid the reality as well manipulative is the same in sync with that you're trying to manipulate your entire situation to feel more safe it's not always a negative thing mischievous it can be uh, the jovial part also mischievous can be taken in that way it you some kind of fun element is required in your life <laughs> this is dove then you have duck eagle bees falcon we have got all sorts of things which you can just take out a print out and use it owl i think i also saw owl power of silence i would like to talk here power of silence in the sense that there are lots of conflicts going on around you a lot of you know bickering and shouting and screaming so if you are seeing owl that means you need to calm yourself down you just need to compose yourself and say nothing because silence is bliss you know so that can be a message which is given to you i think it was me and i did that so i actually went off from a lot of places like i just went like from off social media and also told my friends i don't want to be with you for a while so i did that and it gave me a lot of clarity about what i needed the most so i think that is still there the owl still comes up so great great so it just gives you a message right so you can go through this video once we are done with the class uh in more clarity we'll get yes sir thank you okay this is done now 
earth animals are the most common ones because we relate to that more often <clears throat> so bear uh, we have a couple of responses for bear power uh, taking care of yourself bravery earth element and all those things i'll explain maybe sometime later when we are doing the five element activity so playfulness truths personal very personal person closed person maybe you can reflect self reflection is the prime most thing for the bear meaning then we have buffalo camel cat a lot of people has written cats attentiveness curiosity independence is one thing which cats have okay so they are very independent and playful as well as very spontaneous as well so if you are lacking in those try to build on that because that's going to give you enough direction in as to what you need to do in life if you feel that you don't have these put a five point scale again and then try to figure out which one you are lacking behind cheetah again is very common it's more to do with the tiger lion cheetah family and panther more or less overlapping uh cow i saw cow someone writing cow uh ma'am it means uh, we have these qualities or we need to develop these qualities see it can be both as i told you try to pinpoint on a five point scale 1 to 5 try to uh, write down for each say for example motherhood like on a scale of it, a male person can also write a cow so what does motherhood feel it's about empathy building being close to your loved ones showing okay, a lot of love and care it's not only a motherhood feeling it can be anything it's not only towards your children fertility can be something which is reproductive it can be a work as well it can be what you're doing as well it's not necessarily uh, whether you're fertile or not okay these are all metaphorical meanings which you need to try to decipher why it's uh, but if we are uh, doing this activity with a student or with any any uh, patient so how uh, we can know that the, the this person has these qualities or not and how uh, on how much scale they need to develop these qualities you need to ask them so here is a small part of cbt what we have a sad scale we generally do it in an ad based form so on a point of 1 to 5 we generally ask the person who is responding that say for instance motherhood you explain what motherhood can mean okay so you ask them that how do you feel about this is it the lowest or the most in you okay ma'am the least or the most in you so they put a point say for instance motherhood uh, can be a one even for a female or a male so you try to reflect that why do you feel that you lack empathy so they come up with a lot of their personal stories and their backdrops and a personal history also that maybe i got betrayed several times so i just don't care about anyone anymore or i've been like this from my childhood so you that also gives you a reflection of it you know i generally don't bother about people i'm more of a you know private person i like to be on my own doing my own thing both ways it will give you a reflection okay say for instance motherhood and nurturing and understanding and commitment and gentleness everything is high up five what does that reflect Who can say what? What can that reflect? A very high one. Not giving to others and not giving up. Yes, no boundaries for the person, and that's why the person is stressed. Too much of sweetness is also bad, right? If you're too sweet, there. If you are a giver, if you are an abundant giver, takers are. You know, it can be plenty. They don't have their limits. Okay, so you need to draw a boundary. So boundary setting becomes the prime most important thing for that person. so the training will go into how to set boundaries healthy boundaries you can also say a no so thereby if you do the same activity later on ask them to uh, kind of uh, you know again put a scale of 1 to 5 if things are working they'll put a lower score for these lower score doesn't mean that they are uh, having less of empathy but they are progressing in life whatever the conflict area was deer reindeer and deer would be the same category okay, so reindeer is uh, yeah it can be of the same category you can have all sorts of deers under the same bracket because if we get into too much of symbolism then it's going to be a mess out there so 
this is it dog again is very common see if you're naturally drawn towards dogs it's okay but try to again you know uh, understand what's coming up people many of the people will say dogs and cats but then try to intervene again ask them to uh, reflect close your eyes and reflect what all images are coming up so that will be the more of the innermost conflicts which they have elephants okay so the list is kind of exhaustive so i'm quickly going through this hedgehogs hippopotamus horse horse also i saw someone writing over your war what would that mean who will tell me war what can that mean i think they are ready for fight <laughs> <laughs> ready for fight or maybe they are being used for in the case of you know fighting a subconscious message maybe they are being used horses generally don't fight if you go by their uh, personalities general personalities but they are being used in wars like ma'am wo hindi mein kehte hai na uske kandhe pe rakh ke bandook bana yes exactly so maybe the person is feeling victimized so try to understand how the person is feeling in that realm <clears throat> you will get a few spiritual uh, messages also try to avoid that and try to put it in a more practical way because teenagers and young children won't understand that part maybe adults can but very few adults will so uh, try to filter out whatever you don't need or you yourself don't understand very well put in your reflections about the particular animal also or their reflections about their particular animal which you all did okay and try to figure out that way also koala lion lion many people wrote about lion here authority control generally lions tigers and uh, all the canine uh, uh, represents a lot of ferociousness courage which you may be lacking or how you can build upon your courage mouse monkey ma'am had written about ma monkey and she shared her experience also deep family guys what so whatever your reflections were are actually syncing with this as well yes ma'am i can read it <laughs> <laughs> yes so otter someone wrote otter i remember black panther so it goes on bear again rabbit okay so uh ma'am i want to ask one thing yes uh, the symbolic meanings uh, work with those uh, animals we have chosen first in the first question uh, it works for them as well yes you can build a totem pole see there are various uh, variation for totems you know you can use okay. animals as the three animal activity you can use it as a subconscious realm activity you can use it as purely a totem one or you can use it as a totem pole which i shared the template which i shared over a period of time so whichever you choose is good enough uh, maybe initially you can just have that activity of closing your eyes and understanding which animal is coming up and then gradually build upon the various other techniques uh, this for i mean this worksheet we have to uh, choose four animals not choose four animals you can build upon it. Okay. you may not do it at one go itself it's like a long term process worksheet which we have we generally build upon the animals over a period of time say every month or every two weeks we revisit and see what all progresses we have Okay, so it keeps on changing over a period of time. May not also change, so that also will give you a reflection of what to be done. The easiest way to have uh, totem animals in your setup is building the totem animal deck, which we had made the PDF. That is good enough for a start. So you can just print it out and ask them to color or some things. You can modify it also. but apart from that generally people have these colorful deck cards you can make them also you can ask the specifically children you can ask children to make these cut out pictures from the magazines 
uh, you know, those National Geographic magazines where you get a lot of different varieties of animals and you can start writing reflections upon their characteristics. It's there over the internet, all the symbolisms and everything is there on the internet. You can pick and choose and write whatever may resonate with your uh, counseling setup. Okay, not necessarily you have to put everything together. So you can make these card decks. These are pretty much fun and interesting. You can make these and keep it in store to be used every time. There are two techniques to be used. One, you can just draw one card. It's generally said that your, you know, uh, your spirit guides are calling you, basically. But if it's too heavy for them or for yourself, you can always spread out the card like we do it in tarot. We spread out the cards and you pick up the one which you're most drawn to. So you've got a visual platter of animals and then you just pick up a card and read what's going on and you keep a diary of notes about it so every time you're feeling threatened every time you're feeling low or under a lot of stress or conflicts you can pick up a card and start journaling about that particular animal what is the animal trying to what is the message the animal is trying to give you that way you'll get a lot of insight as to what changes you need to make within yourself or what all power you have so that you can bring the best out of it in your crisis situation and we can ask the child to uh, pick a animal as well by looking yeah. at the card that will be a fun thing for them also it's a great way to build rapport with children okay ma'am So this is it. It was not a very elaborate process for the time being, but once you start doing it, you'll see a lot of things goes in. You know, it takes approximately an hour to come up to a conclusion and thereby the discussion follows also. Okay, so your assignment for this would be either to make a tar uh, this thing, uh, your uh, totem animal deck or to just finish the one which you have started. Okay, put in reflection, put in uh, a few words or sentences how you feel about it or you make a tarot deck for yourself either or and the same link you will upload your assignments okay the link remains the same the form remains the same but you need to re-enter uh, your name so that we have it for our record uh, just a question if, if by any chance uh, the previous assignment was not completed can we mm -hmm. like do for this Yes, absolutely. it's open now. For the timing, it's open. Um, I just wanted to know the recordings will be available for a long time. No, they won't disappear. <laughs> it will be on YouTube, okay. <laughs> like forever till I don't die. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but it was really insightful. I was. I don't know if you could see the raised hand, but uh, for oh, me, so I'm really fond of um, you know uh, owls. And I'm a dog lover. So initially, of course, that dog and whatever it was, um, <clears throat> cat and rabbit came up, which is quite interesting to see how I chose a cat. I dislike cats, actually. <laughs> and uh, then the, when you talked of the, you know, I don't dream of animals as such, but once I've had a snake dream. So that was <clears throat> interesting to see that although you are an animal lover in other spaces, what comes up in your dream is quite different. But the animal I chose was a bear and while you were talking I was also googling and reading up the connotations it was really insightful because yeah both those characters of holding my own ground and also being uh, supportive and caring for a lot of people right now was so true so it was very interesting to I'd love to repeat it with my sons and my family that's great yeah great to know I just had a question. Can you just repeat what is totem pole exactly? I didn't get that. Uh, totem poles were built by the Americans, Native Americans, where they believed that certain spirit guides, you know, the animal guides, they kind of send them messages, what they need to build upon the same way we did in a more shamanic way. You, know, They were the spiritual uh, beings at that point of time. They believed in the nature and God and animals and they worshipped animals, in fact. So what was their idea about building a totem pole was the entire family had one animal guide who gave them constant support. You know, they felt that they are the protectors of the family. So in, uh, in order to honor them, they built those poles out of carved wood. 
Okay, so okay. each clan or each family <laughs> inside the clan had these totem poles representing who they are as family members. Like we have, say, a family of doctors. Yeah. We want people to know uh, it's a family of doctors, lawyers, or engineers, or whatsoever. You want that word, right. parampara, bolte, na? Uh -huh. so that the future generations who you are. Okay, right. so it's about the whole personality of the family. The same way, it's very interesting to know in Hinduism, we have gods and goddesses with animals. Okay, so yes. if you reflect on that, you see what each animal means for the gods and goddesses. Maybe you can read up this. It's pretty interesting to know in Indian context also, we have totem animals. Right. Yeah. With certain symbols for certain aspects of ourselves. Uh, Ma'am, even I have seen uh, a lot of uh, tarot card uh, videos of people they are posting on Instagram that they just uh, give you th the choices of two to three animals and they uh, tell you to choose yes. uh, animals by the intuition and they tell you your reading. I guess this works as well. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's more like an intuitive thing. But yeah, if you go more into the scientific realm, it's all about your subconscious reflecting. The symbolism of animals. Tarot cards are yeah, this is uh, this is the exact reason that I you know I said that you know I'm not scared of snakes because I related to Shiva so you know uh, that is how I came up with snake yeah so it brings me luck that is how I have you know came up with this concept right. it's absolutely connecting yeah thank you great so it was lovely having you and having a conversation and sharing this. Uh, assignment would be again either you do the totem deck deck cards you either build and make a video or uh, take photographs and put it across or else whichever technique we did today the three animal one and the one which you thought of that one complete it and send it across so either do it with yourself or someone else maybe if you do it with someone else also that will give you a practice if you can do it with someone else and send it across Ma'am, three animals uh, that no need to draw, right? We have to write and send. Is that enough? Yeah, that would be a part of journaling. If you can draw it, nothing better than that. Okay. Hi, Rhea. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, topic, I would say, or uh, the whole presentation video is what you're doing. Uh, I joined a bit late. Uh, yesterday, I couldn't attend the, the yesterday's briefing uh, video, what you had. Yesterday? not have last week we had one. Oh, okay is the recording available yes, uh, it's on youtube okay i'm gonna go through it and uh, probably catch up on what i've lost and uh, the assignment uh, i'm not really sure how do you upload the assignment where exactly it is done if you could just repeat it uh be really great. assignment you need to uh, create your own drive link okay over there in that folder in your own drive you uh, up, keep on uploading whichever assignments we are and you just share the link with us. There's a space okay. in the link. Because okay. if uh, so many days, if you keep on having a lot of pile up of documents, it's going to be, you know, our drive will be full. So okay. that, that's why I wanted you all to create a folder in your own drive and keep on uploading. We'll just go back and check everything there. And try to maintain one single folder. Great. Okay. So that's Thank you so much. All right. Thank you all of you for joining in. Any questions, you can uh, text me. I might just take a day, but I'll get back. Don't worry. <laughs> um, I'm going to uh, ask one thing. Uh, it's about the last assignment. I've already done it, but uh, uh, in the resource, we the black color and brown color details are not available. Is it uh, possible that you can share the details? Yes, yes. I'll do that. I'll check and do that. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.